All right, guys, welcome back to Fairwinds RV. I'm going to be honest right off the bat, this is take two because um, we had some music playing in the background that um, YouTube was probably going to flag. But I wasn't planning on making a video on this, and I don't want you guys to be looking for a huge production on this one. What we're doing today is we are repacking our wheel bearings. So we're inspecting them and repacking them. Um, I wasn't going to do this, like I said, but we have some friends in the park um, who kind of wanted to see this but they have to work on the day that I'm doing this. Basically what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna start out going over all the tools, materials, and supplies that you need to do this. Kind of go over what my workspace looks like. Um, we're gonna go over here and take, take a look at all the tools that I've got staged up next to the RV. And we're just gonna walk through the whole process. So like I said, what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go through all of my tools and uh, materials here. And if you don't understand, or if you don't recognize what some of these are, don't worry about it because you're gonna see it in action. And when you see it in action, you'll, you'll understand immediately what that's for. Let's get started here. We're just going to work our way left to right. So first of all, over here, I've just got my grease, right? The grease that I'm using, I'm using this Mobile One synthetic grease. Uh, both of these are the same. It's just in a different container. Uh, just the grease that I chose. It's a top brand grease, highly rated. So um, we've got the grease for going into our bearing packer. Uh, that's actually going to pack the bearing. Then we've got tube grease that we're going to put in our uh, grease gun and I'll show you why you need both here in a little bit um, if you don't know why we need both. All right, then I've got just my work surface here um, and coming across, I've got, I've done three of these already today and I'm now comfortable enough that I'm drinking a beer for this one. Um, and then over here, so I've got just a box of bearings, uh, races and bearing seals. Um, I fortunately am not having to replace any of these this time, but I do keep them on hand because you never know when you're gonna need them, right? So if I started this job and I started to see some bearing uh, damage or bearing wear, I'm just gonna replace all of them. So, so far I haven't seen, um, anything that indicates I need to replace anything. So I'm still gonna have a box of uh, spares uh, left over. Okay, um, here is what they call a uh, bearing race and seal driver set. You'll see this in action, but this is for uh, getting the bearing races and the bearing seals set in place. Now I'm not doing anything with the bearing races today other than just inspecting them to make sure that they're fine. But you'll see this, how this uh, set comes in handy when I go to put the seal in, and then when I'm all done and we go to put the dust cover back on the hub. All right, so one thing I wanna mention here is uh, cleanliness. Uh, a couple of reasons. Number one, you just wanna keep your work site as clean as possible because it just makes things go more smoothly. It's less cluttered, you're gonna lose less stuff. Um, gloves, right? Uh, the cleanliness here is one, you don't wanna get it all over your hands, but number two, you don't wanna get any body oils in this grease can that, because those body oils um, can break that grease down over time. So you just wanna keep everything as clean as possible. The last thing, the last two things I'll mention here is the shop towels. Um, if you don't have shop towels, get shop towels. You don't want to use uh, paper towels. They're too thin. They just don't work very well. Uh, I'm on my third roll, so you're going to go through lots of shop towels. And then the last thing is, is make sure you have a garbage bag standing by. Um, you can see this one is almost full, right? This is like a 13 gallon bag and it's full of shop rags because I like to keep uh, everything nice and clean. Oh, and then the last thing is the disposable gloves. Um, use as many as it takes, right? Just keep your area clean and tidy. So let's go over here to the RV, take a look at what we've got um, set, set up over there. And um, actually, we're just gonna get started from right over there. All right guys, so I'm just starting from um, the actual process of going through and removing the hubs to get to the bearings and everything. Um, what I'm not showing here is, is I've already got the tires off. Um, I've already got the rig jacked up, right? One thing I wanna mention though here is, if you'll notice, I've got this jacked up on the frame and not the axle, right? So the manual says for this, for all of this slipper stuff, don't jack it up by the axle. Make sure you do it on the frame. So I've got, I've got it on the frame there, and then I've also got a jack stand back here on the frame, um, and they're both carrying a little bit of weight, uh, but the jack stand is there as, you know, just in case something happens that, that uh, hydraulic jack fails or something. So I've got two points here that are holding this rig up. If the jack fails, I've still got the, the jack stand. But um, again, don't ever jack your rig up by the, by the axle or you know, raise these tires off uh, the ground by using the axle. 
Uh, the manual says specifically not to do that. All right, so I didn't show any of that because I'm assuming most people can get that part out of the way. Okay, so down here, the rest of the tools that we have. Um, so I've got my grease gun, which we're gonna use uh, later in the process. Uh, just a basic hammer. Uh, you know, I've got this big adjustable wrench. You know, probably don't need one this big, um, but that's what was handy for me. I got just a flat tip screwdriver, a pair of needle nose pliers, and a chisel. And you're probably thinking, what the hell do you need a chisel for? Well, this is why. All right, so we're gonna get started here. Um, the first thing that we have to do is get this dust cover off, right? So the easiest way I found to do this is actually with the chisel. You just pop this baby in here. You give it a good a couple of good taps. Rotate your hub around. Get the other side, right? And now you can get a screwdriver in there and start prying this thing off. Right, so this hub, the reason we're taking this off, right, is because this is where all of our bearings are. And I'm sorry, I'm not trying to talk down to anybody, but I'm, you know, sometimes I'm surprised what people know and what they don't know, so. Oh, there we go. All right, so the dust cover is off. Uh, what this dust cover does is two things, right? Number one, it prevents all the dust and crap from getting in there. But number two, it's got this little uh, rubber, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, but this little rubber piece comes out and it gives you access to this Zerk fitting in here um, where you can force more grease through those bearings. So. We're gonna do that later on in the process and I'll show you what that's like. But let's say, uh, basically, you know, I do this today, I'm greasing my bearings today. Six months from now, um, you know, I think maybe I went through a bunch of water. I don't know, maybe I went through a bunch of weather. Uh, but I wanna force more grease through there. That's what this Zerk fitting can be used for is to force more grease through the system to force the old grease out. So we're not gonna to go totally into that today. You, you'll see the process a little bit, uh, but that's what this is for. Okay, so the first thing we have to do in here is there's this cotter pin that we're going to want to remove all right and i'm just going to kind of walk through the construction of this as well or how it's put together so this cotter pin is simply in place uh, to keep this castle nut from rotating right so we need to get this castle nut off because what's going to happen is we're going to pull this castle nut off it's got a washer behind it and then this whole assembly is going to slide out and it's going to bring both bearings with it so we've got to just get this cotter pin out of here real quick. Sometimes it's not real quick. Sometimes it's a real pin in the butt. There we go. Okay, and then this uh, castle nut, and you'll see why later this castle nut, well, this one's actually tight, uh, but it shouldn't be real tight. So we're just gonna loosen that up. You see how that was pretty loose. A lot of times um, you can just, you know, it's just hand tight and you'll see why, you'll see why later. So we'll remove this. All right, and then when I slide this off, right, the first things that are in line here is we've got a washer and then we've got this outer bearing, which is a smaller bearing. But when we pull this off, that's likely gonna fall out. So when you pull this hub assembly off, just like grab it, right? Slide it out just a little bit, get your hand down here in front of it, and then just pull it straight off and don't let that bearing fall on the ground. All right, and then we'll just take this over to the workspace. Okay, so this is the part that I don't like uh, about, well, I don't really like any of this um, because I'm, I'm, I'm not an auto mechanic enthusiast or anything like that. I hate working on cars, but this is the worst part. So we're gonna have to pull this thing apart. So first, we're just gonna take this washer off, clean off the washer, then we're gonna pull the bearing out and we're gonna just wipe that bearing down and just while we're wiping it down, we're just gonna kind of inspect it and we're gonna be looking for any kind of pitting on the bearings, any kind of scratches or discoloration, right? So pittings and scratches means that there's something has gotten into the bearing and it's got defects in it now. Um, any kind of discoloration probably means there's some sort of um, heat damage to it. And if we see any of those, we're just gonna wanna replace the whole thing. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do. This part is, is not fun because it's messy, it's time consuming, and it's just, I don't know, I don't like it. So you can see in here how this grease is really discolored, right? The, so the grease that I put in here was red. You know, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily bad. Um, it's, just, it's just older grease um, that needs to be replaced. So if you see that where it's discolored, where it looks like it's black, don't think that it's, you know, don't immediately think, oh my gosh, I've burned up my bearing or anything like that. That's, that's not, that's probably not the case. 
and you don't need to get these bearings super clean right now. Um, you you want to get as much of this, you know, old grease off just, you know, without, without going crazy. All right, so that's probably good for now because what we're going to do is we're going to put this in a bearing packer and that bearing packer is going to shoot new grease, force new grease in between all of these little uh, rolling spindles here. I don't know what you, what you really call it. You can see it's made in China. I don't know if I like that or not, but it's what I got. Um, and it's going to force new grease through there from the bottom through the top and then it's going to force all of that old grease out so that's probably good enough for now so get a good shot of this down in here so what we've got down in here is right inside of this hub assembly the first thing we're looking at here well first of all is just a bunch of grease but the first thing we're looking at here is this um, outer bearing race right so this i just took that outer bearing off and this is the race that it sits in so that bearing sits right inside of there just like this right and the axle, the spindle from that axle goes through here. So I can already tell, you know, just at a glance, like I said, I'm not really a mechanic, um, but I have quite a bit of bearing replacement and maintenance uh, experience from my Navy days. Even though I was an electrician, we were responsible for a lot of bearing work. So um, I can tell right away, I don't feel anything in here. There's no um, discoloration a lot of times it'll be like a blackish purplish bluish color if there's any kind of disc discoloration so that one looks pretty good so I'm now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wipe out as much of this grease as I can which is not fun all right so that's good enough for time being so what now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this hub over and we're gonna get to that inner bearing <sighs> Right. So what we have here on the outside or on the uh, inside is um, so this is the hub assembly. This is where your this is your basically your brake drum, right? As well. So it's your brake drum, your hub assembly. Everything fits on here. And what we need to do to get access to that that inner bearing is we've got to take this um, grease seal off of here. Now I don't have a grease seal puller, um, which would probably make this a little easier. So what I'm gonna have to do is um, grab my hammer and I'll show you how to do this with a hammer. You could also do it with a screwdriver if you had one. I've never really had a lot of luck of screwdrivers doing it, um, but I have seen people do it. Okay, so for this bearing seal here, I'm just gonna stick the claw of the hammer in there and when I, I'm just going to pull up, just yank up like this. Now you might think I'm going to ruin the bearing in here, but when I do it that way, I'm not actually putting any pressure on that bearing. It's all, I'm putting outward pressure on the seal here and a downward pressure on the seal there. So there's, um, it's not really, it's not affecting the bearing at all. And this is going to take a few times. And you just kind of rotate it, do the other side. And eventually it's just going to pop. There it goes. Oh, I almost hit Candace in the head with it. That would have been funny. So now what we see here is now we have this inner bearing. Um, and all we're going to do is we're just going to pull it out as well and get it wiped down. And then we're going to finish cleaning out the center part of this hub and get all that old grease out of there. So again, I'm just kind of looking at this bearing here. I'm not seeing any, you know, it's very nice and smooth. It almost still looks brand new. So I don't see any issues here with this bearing either. All right, so that's probably good enough for now. Now we just need to get the rest of this grease out of here. So again, this is, um, this is not a video of, you know, how to completely um, uh, replace all of this. Again, because I'm not taking the races out. If that's um, something that you need to do, um, it's not difficult. Um, it's just more, you know, things that you have to do. But if that is something that you uh, need to do is uh, replace those bearing races, um, I would recommend that you go to the e-trailer website. They have a really, really good video on there. They have really good videos about everything. Um, I have no affiliation with e-trailer, um, but they're so good at what they do and their customer service and their videos um, that I recommend uh, anytime you do anything like this. Check out e-trailer um, and see what kind of videos they have on it. All right, so that's probably good for now because what we're gonna do now 
because the inside of this is disgusting, right? Um, we're actually gonna take this back over. I've got a little oil pan set up and we're gonna shoot this with brake cleaner and we're just gonna get all the nastiness out of here. And then um, we will start repacking the bearings. Uh, we'll fill this void uh, with some grease and then we'll start putting everything back together. Okay, so I've got a little um, oil pan here, which you know I recommend that you do. I'm not a tree-hugging Greenpeace kind of guy, but you know I don't really want to put all this brake cleaner in the in the grass here, especially with all the animals in these campgrounds. So um, it's pretty easy. We're just gonna shoot this stuff on here. It's pretty good about taking all that nasty stuff off. And then we're just gonna really just kind of lightly wipe it down um, to get all of the, the loose stuff. So that's probably good right there. All right, so um, little, just a, a little trick here to get all this stuff at the bottom. So the hub's got the, um, the bolt sticking out the back. Just kind of pick it up by those bolts real quick uh, and shoot this one last time in the bottom to drive all that, that stuff out. All right, and then, boom, you just set it off to the side. Then just kind of wipe the excess off. Um, again, this isn't, um, you know, it's not brain surgery or anything. Um, so we don't want to go overboard here. We just want to get all of the, the loose debris out that can um, get inside of the bearings or, um, you know, uh, mess up our our uh, drum here or the brake pads all right so i think that's pretty good uh so we're going to take it back over we're gonna, just going to finish cleaning out the inside of it but before we do that we're going to put this pan under here and we're just going to shoot this a little bit you know just whatever um i don't want to keep this can so mostly i just want to kind of get rid of this stuff and we'll just shoot it in here all gone and then um, just kind of wipe all this stuff out. All right, I'm not doing a brake job here, so I'm not worried about any of that. I am kind of just looking to make sure that nothing is like, looks weird. Uh, I'm not even sure I would know what that looks like, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> but everything, I guess, looks okay to me. All right, almost forgot one last thing that I like to do. Um, before I go back and start repacking the bearings, right? Like I mentioned earlier, there's a void inside of this uh, hub, and we wanna make sure that that gets full of grease in the end. Now we're gonna do the best we can to kind of manually put some in there, um, but we're not gonna be able to fill it all the way up. Um, so the way that we fill that all the way up is we've got our grease gun and this grease gun is gonna shoot grease into this Zerk fitting. There's a little port right here, right here. So that grease is gonna come into this Zerk fitting, woo, travel through here and then come out here. And then that bearing seal will prevent it from going any farther that way and it'll force it all back through the bearing. So what I like to do here is I just like to make sure, number one, that all of that line is clear. And that way I know that later on when I go to do this, I'm actually going to be getting grease in there. And so what I do is I just hook it up and I just squeeze it a few times. Oh, sometimes it, right? And you can see that coming out here now and you can see all that black nasty grease that's in there, right? And I just pump it until I get solid red, brand new grease out of it, right? And now I know everything here is working the way that it should be and I've got all that old nasty grease out of there. So now we're gonna take our hub back over, uh, finish cleaning it up, wiping it out, and then we'll get uh, the bearings packed and start reassembling. So this is where our bearing packer, if you don't have one of these, uh, there are other ways to pack these bearings. So one of the ways of packing bearings is literally, you take this bearing in your hand, you put a big old dollop of grease in your hand, in the palm of your hand, and you just pack it like this. That's not me, I'm lazy, right? Um, 
And when you do that, it forces the bearing in through here and forces it out that way. Um, but this bearing packer makes this a lot easier. So what this is, is this is, it's got a big plunger in here. I'm not gonna pull it out because it's gonna uh, introduce air. But it's got a big plunger in here. When this thing comes brand new, you just pull this big plunger out. It's this big white piece in here. And you just pull this thing out and you fill this little tub with your grease, with your wheel bearing grease. Then you put this plunger back in there like that. So basically all we're gonna do is um, we're gonna put this bearing in there and you can't see it because it's covered up by the grease, but um, there are little tiny holes in the bottom of that plunger. And when we put this bearing in here, just like this, right? And then we're gonna put the rest of the plunger together. Where did it go? All right, I don't know where I left off, guys. Uh, we had a little mishap there. I couldn't find this piece. So anyway, so back to this bearing packer. You got the plunger down there. You got the holes that are um, in the bottom of that plunger. And then um, you stick your bearing in there. And then this little deal just screws right on the top, just like this. And then we're just gonna push down on this. And that grease is gonna get forced up through the bearing. So come over here and see if you can get a shot. All right, you can see the old grease starting to come out. And you don't have to do this very much because there's just not a lot of old grease in there. All right. It's like little octopus tentacles coming out. So that's probably good, right? We've got all the, all the old grease out. There's new grease inside of it. So now we just unscrew this bad boy. And of course, we want to keep it clean. So you can see some of the old grease there. It's all black and nasty. We just want to get that off. Okay. I'm not gonna, we're gonna use that again here in a second. Then what I like to do is you can see all that old grease that came out in there. Some of it's new grease, some of it's old grease. All right, the important thing is, is we have grease inside of that bearing now. So I'm gonna take all of this old nasty grease, kind of like, about like that, just get rid of it and then what we'll do here in a minute is we'll add fresh grease all over the rest of that bearing. So I just take this thing out, I set it to the side just like this, just put it down on a, on a shop towel, get the second bearing, drop it in. Okay, so again, going like this, and this one might be easier to see because the bearing is bigger. So we're just gonna push down. That old grease is starting to come up out of there. Hopefully you can see that. See if you can, can you see? Yeah, okay, all that grease is coming out of there. I like to just give it a couple of more pushes. And you gotta wobble it around a little bit. Some people have said um, that they got these bearing packers and they're like, oh, it didn't work. I was pushing and pushing and nothing ever came out. Well, you gotta push really hard. It hurts your hands if you're doing it right. Okay, and you don't have to do it very long, right? All that grease is now out of there. Again, all the old grease that came out of that bearing, it's all mixed with new grease. You're gonna waste a lot of grease. It's just, that's the nature of it. You can't avoid it. Actually, you know what? I can still see some old grease out here around the sides on this bearing. So unfortunately, I'm gonna put that back in there. And I'm gonna force even more grease through it because I wanna get all of that old stuff out. Okay, so now I can see, yeah, there's, yeah, I can get all that old grease out of there. So again, I'm just gonna pull this out. It's gonna kind of set it to the side. Now, what's left in here is just some old, um, well, mixed with new, uh, but I wanna get that out of there before I store this. All right, so I think that's good enough. Uh, I've got all the old grease out. There's a little bit of new grease still in there, but that's okay. And then what I like to do is just screw this back down in here. Just like that. Take your uh, protective cover on it for storage. Just slide that baby on there. Wipe it down real good. Now you're never gonna get it super clean unless you take some <laughs> Dawn dish detergent. All right, so I'm all done with that. Okay. Um, can't remember if I wipe this out one more time, so I'm just gonna wipe this out. See if you can get in there on that race. 
So this race right here, you can see it's nice and smooth. I can run my finger across. I mean, it just feels like glass, right? And that's what you want. If you have any pitting in there, um, if you can feel like there's just little tiny holes in it, kind of like a cavity almost in your tooth, um, you're going to want to replace that. Um, if, if you can feel any scratches in it, again, you're just going to want to replace it. Um, if you see any discoloration, like I said before, uh, that blackish, bluish, purple color uh, on there, and it might be kind of patchy, or it might be, you know, just circular in there. Um, it just means that you've overheated that bearing, and you just want to, you're just, you're just going to want to replace it. All right, so that looks pretty good. This race is just like glass as well. Okay, so now for the not so fun part, another not so fun part. So now what we're going to do, Janice was uh, nice enough to give me one of her spatulas slash scraper. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take it and we're going to fill this void kind of as much as we can here without making just a huge stupid mess. Um, so we're just going to put that in there like that. That in there. Maybe add just a little bit more. Maybe. Okay. Oh, dang it. All right. Now, you see, I just kind of messed up here. Glad I did that. So you can see here, I've got some of that grease um, out here inside of the hub. You want to get that out of there because that grease, um, if that gets on the brake pads or the shoes, then that can really uh, affect the, um, the longevity of your shoes. So we'll make sure that we get that grease out of there before we put this back on. All right. So we're just going to take this grease and we're going to kind of fill that void in there. So it's going to do a couple of things. It's just going to provide like a, a reservoir of grease for us right um and it's also the inside of this hub if any water gets in there right it won't get on the metal surfaces whoa holy dookie that's a lot of grease okay it won't uh, that water won't uh, be sitting uh, on those metal surfaces it'll be covered with grease right and you don't want to go overboard on this uh, like you wouldn't want to pack that whole can of grease in here, but you can be pretty liberal about it. So, um, the reason that I, another reason that I like to do, geez, uh, do this part right now is get as much grease in there as I can is because what we're going to do in a little bit is we're going to take that grease gun and we're going to then fill the rest of that void with grease and then, you know, uh, shoot, uh, shoot it out basically through that outer bearing again. And I'll show you what that looks like. So the more grease you get in here now, the less number of times you have to pull the trigger on that grease gun. So just a helpful hint there. Now to go back to our bearings that we packed, what we're going to do here is just pick these up and you're going to have all this kind of excess grease on the inside of it. Just wipe that off, boom, transfer it to the outside. Just like that. And just get it nice and whatever, evenly coated here with this grease, right? And so inside of these little spindles, right, you're not going to be able to really force any more grease in there and it's not going to stick to it very well. But just realize inside of there, right, it's packed full of grease already, right? So all we're really doing here is just kind of coating it down a little bit, spreading it out nice and evenly. All right, so I'm just going to pop this sucker in here or just drop it in there and it's going to sit nicely in that race, maybe. Hello. There we go. Just gonna sit in there real nice. So now I've got that inner bearing in. I'm just gonna kinda, I don't know, smooth that grease around a little bit. Probably not necessary, but it makes me feel better. Okay. And then like I said a while ago, I'm gonna go ahead and get that grease off of the, the hub assembly here. So just wipe that off. You don't gotta go overboard here. You're not gonna get the brake cleaner back out again. Just wipe off any of that excess grease. Boom, just like that. Now we're gonna take one of our grease seals here. And this is the, does just like, it sounds like it does. It just prevents any of that grease from coming out the backside of this hub assembly. So I like to just take some of this grease that's in here, just lube it up a little bit. I mean, why not, right? Everything else has got grease on it. Okay, so now we've got our grease seal here and we're just gonna lay that on top, right? So this is very, all this stuff's very finely machined, very tight tolerances. All right, so now we're going to pull out our seal driver. Arf, arf, arf. Um, that was my seal noise. Okay, so this thing's pretty cool. So it's got two different sides on it. So if I needed to set something down in there very flush-like, 
like like I'm going to. Um, it's got this little lip on it, right? That will only let you pound that sucker down in there uh, so far. Um, now, unfortunately, my hub, the inside diameter of my hub is actually bigger than the outside diameter of this thing. So I kind of have to do it a little bit differently, but we're gonna make this work. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna gently tap this with a hammer and get it started. Right, theoretically, it should put pressure all the way around, you would think, evenly. Eh, it kind of does, but it kind of doesn't. So I'm just going to get it started, and then I'm going to move this around the inside of that seal. That way I, I make sure that um, I'm, I'm just going flush here, right? So I'm just going to move this around a little bit. Do it just as evenly as possible. You don't, again, this isn't brain surgery. Um, you just take a little bit of care, right? And then what you want is you want this to be just nice and flush, just like that, right? So that does a really good job uh, of doing that. So this, um, you don't have to have this if you're not replacing the races, the bearing races. If you're replacing bearing races, you're gonna need a set of these to get those set in there properly. If you're just taking bearings out, uh, repacking them and putting them back in, then you could just use like a block of wood or anything anything that's flat, has a flat surface on it. And you, you can just put it over the top of that bearing seal and just kind of hammer it into place. Um, I bought one of these because, you know, we're on the road. If I blow a bearing, then you're gonna need these. Okay, so again, we're just gonna coat this real nice. And then we're gonna uh, make sure that our uh, race in here, our inner race has got some grease, right? All right, so we're just gonna take that. And again, the cone, right? The thin part of that cone just sits right in that bearing race, just like that. Okay, and then we wipe off again. Ugh. This part sucks, guys. This. The, <sighs> Greasing your bearings wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't for the grease. <laughs> We're almost done here. Um, so we've got this washer still, which is really hot. Um, again, I'm just gonna take some grease out of here. Boom, just, why not, right? Grease it up nice and good. All right, so we're just gonna set that right back in there, just like that. All right, now we have pretty much a completed hub assembly. And we're gonna go put this on, do the last couple of steps over there. And I will be done for the day and um, I'm gonna be ready to finish my beer. So we've got the spindle in here that we cleaned off, made it nice and clean earlier. We've already kind of pre-lubed it with some of that grease. So now I'm just gonna just take some, um, a little bit of this uh, grease here and I'm just gonna just put it all over the spindle. Just like that. I mean, now there's gonna be, it's gonna be sitting in a bunch of grease anyway, but you know, can't hurt anything, right? E-trailer does it, so I'm doing it. Again, uh, when we put this up here, this uh, outer bearing and the washer are gonna wanna fall out. So just make sure you cup it to make sure, uh, to prevent dropping it on the ground. Let me just lift this up here. Slide that sucker on. You can see all that grease come out. Uh, there we go. Just force it, or just put it in there as far as it'll go. Again, guys, I'm sorry about the production on this. This is not my main, one of my main videos. Uh, but figure, what the heck, right? I am not going to spend a lot of time in production here. But we've got everything on there. We've got our bearings in there. We've got them repacked. Uh, we've got the spindle nice and clean. We've got it pre-lubed. So the last thing we got to do here, if I can find it, is put our castle nut back on to secure all of this in place. And one thing to note here is you would think, all right, we got to make sure this is nice and tight so nothing comes out. Wrong. It's not the case at all. All right, so what we're going to want to do is I just like to get that finger tight. Okay. And then you're going to take a wrench and you're going to put about tighten it to about 50 maybe 50 foot pounds of torque right so and i'm just using a calibrated elbow here it's not super important that you you know get exactly 50 pounds but you know whatever you think about 50 pounds is so that makes sure that everything is forced in and everything is seated properly right and then what you're going to do if you remember in the beginning i had to pull that cotter pin out so there's a hole going through this spindle this way 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to loosen this cotter pin back up to where it's um, where I can freely spin it, and then I'm just going to hand tighten it to where one of these openings in the castle nut lines up with um, that hole in the spindle. All right, so I'm going to back this off. Right, and the reason that I'm doing this, right, is when this if this thing is too tight, right, then it affects the free rotation here. So. Essentially, what we're doing is, is we just made that all tight in there, packed it in the way it's supposed to be. All right, then we're going to back this off. Okay, so now it's freely, I can freely spin this, but it's all tight in there. And then I'm going to line these holes up so that I can get my cotter pin back through there. So the key here is that you want it to be tight enough uh, that all that stuff is, is packed in there. And it's not going anywhere. There's no movement. All right, so this cotter pin's just going to slide right through here, just like this. Okay, that castle nut. I mean, it's 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 about hand tight now, um, but we don't want it gronked on there. So the idea here again is all that stuff. We want to make sure it's packed in there nicely, but we want to make sure that that castle nut is loose enough to allow free rotation of the hub, right? And that it's tight enough so that we don't get any uh, lateral movement here back and forth on this spindle. So this hub is all in there, nice and secure, right? But it's still able to freely rotate. Now that we've got that, we'll take this cotter pin. I like to bend one side of the cotter pin one way and the other side the other way to prevent, to prevent it from coming out. You can bend them both the same way, I guess, if you want to. It's just preference, I think. I don't know. I'm kind of winging it here, guys. All right, so everything's back together the way that it should be, with the exception of our dust cover, which we want to go ahead and clean that out, guys. Make sure that you do this. All right? Don't do all that work that you just went through and then put a dirty freaking dust cover on it. That's just silly. All right, good enough. Okay, so, but before we put that on there, we have got to fill the rest of that void in the middle of this hub with grease, all right? So this is super simple, right? This is what's called a Zerk fitting, Z-E-R-C, Z-E-R-K. I think it's Z-E-R-K fitting, right? And you just pop this on here and it, it feels, it might feel loose, but it's, it's not, it'll do its job. And I just start pulling this trigger and I'm probably gonna pull this trigger. Oh, you can see a little bit of grease coming out here. So sometimes you gotta wiggle a, a little bit. All right, so she's gonna help me here, hold that on there. You gotta push it in there real good. And I'm gonna pump this and pump this and pump this until I think, oh my gosh, it must be empty. And then I'm gonna keep pumping some more. So what we're looking for here is um, eventually this grease is gonna start coming right back, right back out. It's gonna kind of like bubble. And then um, you'll see grease coming out. And I have no idea actually what this thing feels like when it's runs out of grease. So what I do every now and then is I take it off, put it down here on a shop towel, squeeze it. Oh, yep, still got grease coming out, so we're good. Yeah, okay, so can you see it? Okay, so you can see that grease now is being forced. Oh, yeah, there we go, on the bottom right there, it's coming out a little bit. It's coming out now on the top and that's all we want to do, right? So now we know that entire cavity is full of grease. And you can just leave it just like that, right? Uh, the grease, all that grease in there is fine. Um, we're gonna cover this up with our dust cover, right? This is important. Don't forget to put these on um, because it keeps all the water and the dirt and crap out of your uh, freshly packed bearings. All right, this can be a, a little bit of a pain sometimes. We'll see what happens. I just take this bearing and race driver, just put that baby on there like that. And it should just go right in. There we go. Right, guys, that's it. Um, that took about an hour and um, probably took longer because we're filming and I'm talking through it and everything. Um, I think my first one today took about an hour and a half. Uh, but my point here is uh, I am not a gearhead. I don't like working on vehicles, uh, but I also don't like spending money on this type of stuff. So, uh, but, so the point here was anybody can do this. 
right? Um, you just got to make sure you're prepared. Uh, you've done your research. You've got the right parts. Uh, you got all the right tools that you need and you have all of the other supplies, the brake cleaner, the grease, the grease gun. So just do your research. Um, and if you have all the right parts and you have all the right tools, uh, anybody can do this. This could be a one man or a one person job all the way through as long as you can do the physical labor of getting this thing jacked up and getting the wheels off. Um, anybody should be able to do this. So that was my point in doing this video, really that and to help out our friends. And now I'm gonna go do some very, very minimal editing on this video um, and we'll get it posted for the world to see. So thanks for watching us. If you like this video, if it helps out, make sure you hit the like button. More importantly, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That's really gonna help us out. We're building uh, a pretty good base uh, here. So if you like these videos and you want to see more of them, if they're helpful to you, make sure you hit that subscribe button to let us know and we'll keep them coming out. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.